Jaya Vishnu Pad Padamahansa Padavachikachari Stotha to Sat the Shishimara Divine Grace A C Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri Ala Pabu Pada Ki Jai Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya Shila Pabu Pada Ki Jai Jayam Vishnu Pad Padamahansa Padavajikachari Stotha to Sat the Shishimara Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Godi Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Shla Haridas Taku Ki Jai Prem Sikaho, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Pabuna Chananda, Shri Advaita Gadadar, Shri Vasudi Govara Bhakta Vrinda Kijai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopinath, Shamakunda Radha Kunda, Giddy Gopadan Kijai, Vrindavan Dam Kijai, Nabadip Mai Pur Dam Kijai, Ganga Jumunamai Kijai, Tulasi Devi Maharani Kijai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Kijai, Harinam Sankirtana Kijai, Brihab Madanga Kijai, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gadango. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, Chapter 1, Text 28 Kachit Varuta Dipatir Yadunam Kachit Varuta Dipatir Yadunam Pradyumna Aste Sukam Angavira Pradyumna Aste Sukam Angavira Yamruk Mini Bhagavato Bilibe Yam Rukmini Bhagavato Bilibe Araja Vipran Smaram Adi Sarge Araja Vipran Smaram Adi Sarge Kachit Veruta Dipatir Yadunam Pradyum Aste Sukam Angavira Yam Rukmini Bhagavato Bilebe Araja Vipran Smaram Adi Sarge Vaishnavis.
Kachit, weather, <clears throat> Varuta of the military, Adipati, commander in chief, Yarunam of the Yadus, Pradyumna, the son of Krishna named Pradyumna, Aste is Sukam, happy, Anga, O Uddhava, Vira, the great warrior, Yam, whom, Rukmini, the wife of Krishna named Rukmini, Bhagavata, from the person from the personality of Godhead, Abhi Lebe, got as a prize, Aradya, pleasing, Vipran, I'm oh, sorry, no, Vipran, Brahmanas, Smaram, Cupid, Kamadev, Adi Sarge, in his previous life. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. O Uddhava, please tell me how is Pradyumna, the commander in chief of the Yadus, who was Cupid in a former life? Rukmini bore him as her son from Lord Krishna by the grace of Brahmanas, whom she pleased. Purport. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, Smara, in parentheses Cupid or Kamadev, is one of the eternal associates of Lord Krishna. Jiva Goswami has explained this very elaborately in his treatise, Krishna Sandarbha. Om Gina Timananda Shajanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dirati Swaparanti Kam. So we're on the banks of the Yamuna River here. Uh, Vidura is reached a point in his pilgrimage where he arrived at the Yamuna and uh, it was just his good fortune that Uddhava happened to be there and uh, so he took this opportunity to inquire from Uddhava about the welfare of different friends and relations that he had affection for he had been uh, already by this time traveling on this pilgrimage for a long time Ananda Kirtan Prabhu mentioned that in his class I can't remember if it was 47 years or something 36 years okay so he'd been away for a long time and he was I guess eager to get information about these personalities first he inquired about Krishna and then he inquired about Vasudev Krishna's father and now he's inquiring about Prabhuna, who was actually the uh, first son of Krishna and his first queen, Rukmini. And uh, so that's a big deal. I mean, you know, the first son of, the, of your primary or your first queen. And uh, so that's today. He's inquiring about Pradyumna. And well, since the verse is about that, we're gonna we'll say something about specifically about Pradyumni, and then we'll talk a, a little bit because it's a very short purport about the overall story, what's going on here. So as far as Pradyumna goes, it's mentioned he's the commander in chief of the Yadus, and in his uh, he was Cupid in his former life. So this, the story there is that um, Pradyumna was, as pointed out in the purport, Cupid or Kamadev, a demigod. And at one point, what was going on was that the demigods is aware, they're always engaged in some sort of, not always, but a lot of, often they're engaged in some sort of fighting against the uh, Asuras. Goes on. And sometimes the demigods are winning and sometimes the Asuras are winning. Like that. It's kind of like a tug of war. Anyway, at one particular point in time, the Asuras would sort of seem to have the upper hand and the demigods weren't particularly happy about that and they realized you know what we're going to lose unless we get a we need a powerful general we need some sort of real powerful hero general to help us otherwise we're going to be defeated so they thought about how they could achieve that and they decided well if we could get uh, an offspring from Lord Shiva that would do the trick that would do the job so 
they um, they devise some sort of a plan. So at some point in that intrigue, you know, uh, Kamadev tried to exert his influence to make Lord Shiva feel. Lord Shiva was in meditation, by the way, so he wasn't interested in being disturbed. And so Kamadev at one point tried to exert his influence to make Lord Sh arouse amorous feelings within Lord Shiva, which Lord Shiva did not appreciate. And it's described that even while continuing his meditation, he, at least different descriptions are sometimes referred to his third eye, but he was, he burned uh, Smara or Kamadev to ashes. So that was the end of his demigod body. And um, so somehow or another, it, it, this is related also in the Krishna book in chapter 55. It doesn't give the exact, exact detail or elaborate upon the reason, but he took his next birth as the, uh, as the son of Krishna and Rukmini. That's how he got his body back, so to speak. That's how it's referred to in the Krishna book. So he's not to be confused with the prajumna of the quadruple expansion. Prabhupada makes that point in his uh, Krishna book here. You know, uh, Vasudev, Prajumna, Aniruddha, Sankarshan, like that. He's not to be confused uh, with that. He's, he's a jiva, okay? And, uh, but he was the first son of uh, Rukmini. And there's an interesting story relating to him. Uh, he was kidnapped. Ten days after he was born, he was kidnapped. And this is, a, you know, as I said, the... It's a big deal because he was the first son of Rukmini, who was the first queen of Krishna. And he gets kidnapped 10 days after he's born. Like, wow. That's, I mean, you can imagine what was going on around the palace, uh, you know, after something like that happens. The grief of Rukmini, the, you know, our son is kidnapped. Anyway, so um, how it happened was there was this uh, demon his name was Sambara. And he knew he was destined to be killed by Prajuna. So as soon as he found out he was born, he kidnapped him and he threw him in the ocean. And he was immediately swallowed up by a big fish. And Sambara felt very happy. That takes care of that. He thought he did what he needed to do to, you know, change his destiny. But what happened was um, that fish was caught by the, the fishermen, um, by some fishermen, and then that fish was sold to the cook, the head cook. <laughs> and and Prabhupada, Prabhupada in the Krishna book actually goes, he, he, he refers to this, uh, I don't know if it's, it's, it's not a shloka, but a verse, you know, Rake Krishna Madeke, Made Krishna Rakeke. That when Krishna wants to kill somebody, nobody can uh, save him. And when Krishna wants to save somebody, nobody can kill him. So just see how it worked, you know. He tried to, he thought, okay, I've finished him off now, but the cook buys the fish, brings it back to the kitchen, Sambara's kitchen, actually, and uh, and starts, you know, but trying to prepare it, and he cuts open the fish, and there's this baby. What the heck? He's just a cook, you know. He's... Now, there was this one lady who was kind of in charge of the kitchen, and her name was Mayavati. So she was like the supervisor. He was a cook, you know. So he brings the baby to the supervisor and says, hey, what's, I don't know, what's, this baby was in this fish here. She goes, let's okay. give it to me. I'll take care of it. I'll take, you know, don't worry. So, so she's, Mayavati now has the little baby, and um, just so happens that Mayavati was, she remembered, she was in her past life, she was Rati. Rati was the wife of Cupid, or Smara, Kamadev, like that. So she could understand that, hey, this baby is uh, my former husband. So anyway, it's, initially she was taking care of the baby, just like a mother takes care of a baby. But um, he grew up very quickly, it's described. He just, you know, reached maturity very, very, very quickly. It doesn't give an exact time, but like very quickly. So, and all the women in the uh, 
palace of Sambara, he was a, you know, a powerful demon, they were all becoming attracted to him. And not as a child, but as a, like a man, because he was very beautiful. He was Cupid, you know. So, and she was too. She was feeling like that too. So at one point, uh, Prajuna inquired from her, you know, you were feeling, I was experiencing feelings like of maternal affection from you, and now I'm feeling something different. What, how do we, you know, how, how, do, how am I to understand this? So she explained to him, you know, that actually in, in my past life, I was your wife. Your, and she, so, okay, so he understood. Anyway, so, and then she, she, she was no ordinary woman. She wasn't just like some ordinary kitchen supervisor or something like that. She also had some mystic powers and she actually empowered him with Mahavidya. I think it was, that's a Sanskrit phrase, term that's used. And she told him that, you know, Sambara is, wants to kill you because you're destined, he's destined to be killed by you. So anyway, they worked out a way that he, he would kill Sambara. So she basically, he prepared himself with these Mahavidya mystic powers because Sambara had the mystic powers of the um, Kuyakas, the, uh, the Pistachi, you know, he had all these mystic powers of all these other demoniac races. He was a master of them. So, but then Prajuna confronted him and there was a big fight. And Sambar was using all his mystic powers to try to kill um, Prajuna. But Prajuna was able to counteract those mystic powers with his higher level mystic powers. And he killed him. And then they decided, okay, they should go back now to, the, to, the, to Dwarka, which they did. And when they got back to Dwarka, they, I think they, I don't know, if they traveled in a mystic way, but when they were in the, you know, the, the room there, all the women were kind of crowding around. Who is this beautiful boy? And who is this, you know, fortunate girl to be with him? And, and then one of them was Rukmini. And she came and she saw and she, and she started thinking, wow, oh, you know, this is, my son was grown up. He probably looked something like this boy. Anyway, she kind of intuitively could, it, it didn't happen all, all at once, like one split second, but as she was looking at him more, and she started, real, this is my son. Yes, that's, 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 you know. And she was, of course, correct. Anyway, right at that time when that was kind of, when she was having that realization, you know, intuitively sort of feeling that Krishna came, he appeared on the scene with Balaram, but they were both quiet. They didn't say anything. But Narada Muni also happened to appear on the scene, and he explained everything to everybody. And all the... Uh, family members and the residents and they were all overjoyed because you know what could be more pleasing the dead son has returned that's the way Prabhupada describes it in the Krishna book so they were all embracing each other you know they're, they're embracing Prajuna they're embracing his wife and it's a very joyous occasion there a lot of affection was being exchanged so that's why you know one of the reasons why he was uh, being remembered by Vidura because he was a very special family member and there was this incredible far out story connected with him and his life and so Vidura was remembering him out of affection. So, you know, affection is the thing that ties this whole thing together, ties a lot of the pastimes of Krishna together. It was, this, uh, you know, affection. This is a very significant pastime because Rukmini has so much affection for her son, first son who she thought was kidnapped, and now she regained him and like that. So feelings of affection were high. And Vidura, he was, after traveling for 36 years, when he sees Uddhava, he didn't start asking him a whole bunch of philosophical questions, at least not initially. What, did he, what he asked about, what he, what he was concerned about was, hey, how are my friends, how are my family members, how are they doing? You know, that was what he wanted to know from Uddhava. Affection. He was, you know, his... his mind and consciousness were driven by affection. He asked about Krishna. He asked about Vasudev. He was asking about Prajumna. He goes on to ask about Ugrasena, Samba, uh, uh, uh Akrura, um, Utmaraj Ugrasena, and Aniruddha, um, some other sons of Krishna, Mahajudhishthir, etc., etc., Bhima, Arjuna, he asked about a lot of people. So, uh, um, Queen Kunti, 
He was very eager to learn about them out of affection. He wanted to know. Then the chapter ends. And then Uddhava, in the, in the next chapter, <clears throat> after being uh, inquired from by Vidura about all these different personalities, he, uh, and I've got to just read a couple slokas here. I know you're not supposed to, just to, to really do justice to his response. So Vidura inquires from Uddhava, and then it goes, Uddhava, <laughs> For a moment, he remained dead silent, and his body did not move. He became absorbed in the nectar of remembering the Lord's lotus feet in devotional ecstasy, and he appeared to be going increasingly deeper into that ecstasy. It was so ob observed by Vidura that Uddhava had all the transcendental bodily changes due to total ecstasy, and he was trying to wipe away tears of separation from his eyes. Thus, Vidura could understand that Uddhava had completely assimilated its extensive love for the Lord. The great devotee Uddhava soon came back from the abode of the Lord to the human plane, and wiping his eyes, he awakened his reminiscence of the past and spoke to Vidura in a pleasing mood. So, um, yeah, Vidura is asking, inquiring out of affection, and out of very deep affection, Uddhava initially he's not even even able to respond just upon hearing being reminded about Krishna and every, he just as you just heard he went into like almost a trance he became in ecstasy overwhelmed by feelings of uh, love and affection and when he did finally start to speak he uh, you know because as, as we mentioned Vidura asked about many many personalities there, maybe like a dozen or so. But Uddhava, in his uh, response, in his answer, he could only talk about Krishna. Krishna was the first person that Vidura asked about. And if, when you read the next uh, chapter, chapter four, I think it is, um, Uddhava can't get past Krishna. He just started remembering Krishna one past time after another, one incident after another. He, he was stuck right there. And... Uh, Finally, it, it got to the point where the, he started describing to, because his infection, uh, affection was so intense for Krishna that, that, you know, he just couldn't think about anything else. So uh, it got to the point where he, just, he was describing to um, Vidura how it was that he came to uh, be with Krishna, right? Just shortly before he was going to give up his body and Maitreya appeared on the scene, and so, forth, and so forth and so on. And then basically it got to the point where, um, excuse me for a second. It got to the point where he'd said everything he could say. You know, he, he, he said everything he was kind of comfortable or feeling inspired to say, and he basically told Vidar, okay, so now I'm going to do what... Uh, I was instructed to do by Krishna, which is go to Bhadarik Ashram and try to get the association of Narayan and Rishis. So, see you later. And uh, Vidura, just as he was kind of going, he said to him, well, you know, you heard from Krishna. And this is, I'm paraphrasing. You heard from Krishna, so, you know, you're totally enlightened and everything. But because of the knowledge, it's, it's fitting that you should try to share that transcendental knowledge with other people like that. So, you know, he was asking, come on, give me some instructions. You know, let's hear some philosophy, some higher, some higher truths and like that. And uh, at that point, Uddhava went and said, yeah, okay, well, you know, but okay, that, that's a reasonable request. But, you know, my Treya Rishi, he's not far off. He's, he's kind of close by here. Go, you can go and, and find, inquire from him about those things, you know. And then he went. And then Vidura, of course, followed that advice, and he went and sought out Maitreya Rishi. Now, in that next chapter, Papad makes the point, and of course it's correct, that the reason why um, <clears throat> Uddhava instructed Vidura to go hear from Maitreya Rishi was because Maitreya Rishi was also a very advanced devotee, and he was senior to him in age, so he was observing the etiquette, not, you know, not violating, not committing what's called maryada, and Prabhupada actually in the purport 
coming up, he re- st- explains it. Maryada Vyatikrama, which means impertinently uh, stepping over one's superior. Maryada means boundary, and Vyatikrama means stepping over. So he makes that point, and that's, of course, correct. But I'd like to suggest, and I didn't have a chance to research this to find out if it's just my speculation or if it's correct, that there's, there's an additional reason as to, and, and um, why Uddhava did that. And it's, once again, it go, goes back to this point of affection and you know, this intense uh, affection and love that, that Uddhava was ex- feeling for Krishna that, just like to, to start off, explain it by an analogy. Imagine you're in a situation where you're, 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 you get sick Okay, and you call your family doctor to, you know, to say, hey, you know, I'm, this, I'm feeling like this, blah, blah, blah. And he says, well, you know, and you, and you find out that he just lost his daughter in a car crash, something like that. And he tells you, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that you feel like that. You know, I think that could you, you can call doctor so-and-so and he could, you know, I think he could, um, he'd be better qualified to help you out with that problem. See, so... It's not like he's not capable of doing it. He, he's over, you know, the grief. He doesn't want, he's going to let the other doctor do it. So it's, it's kind of, I think there's an element of that there too. That Uddhava, he's just, he said what he could say. He spoke about Krishna. He was, you know, feeling so much intense separation and uh, affection and overwhelmed by those feelings by Krishna that, okay, Vidura, that's as much as I could tell you, you know, I'm, I got to go do my thing now. What Krishna told me to do, and all this other stuff. Go, you know, go to my tray. He'll take you know. He'll, you could talk about him with that. So I think there's an element of that there too. But as I said, I didn't get a chance to check the commentaries of predecessor acharyas or anything like that to see if that's true. But anyway, the point is that um, affection is a big thing. You know, uh, affection is the real is the reason why that pastime is. Uh, you know, today's verse about. Prajuna, you know, he comes into the picture because there was that special affectionate thing between him and Rukmini. And then Vidura is making all these inquiries about um, all these different personalities out of affection. Uh, Uddhava's behavior in response to Vidura's question is, uh, you know, just he spends maybe like a few dozen texts talking about Krishna, affection. And, um, yeah, so it's a big thing in spiritual life. It's not like spiritual life is devoid of feelings of affection. Um, Rukmini is not a jiva, but she's feeling affection, motherly affection for her son. She was very distraught when he was kidnapped. She was very overjoyed when he was returned. So, you know, it's there in spiritual life. It's not like spiritual life is devoid of feelings of affection. As a matter of fact... Not only is it not devoid of feeling of, of affections, but to to reawaken these feelings of affection for Krishna and his eternal associates, the pure devotees of Krishna or devotees of Krishna, that's like the goal of life, right? So it's a very you know big important uh, subject matter, and that's what as I said, it's kind of tying this whole pastime together, and uh, and even from an ordinary perspective just, you know, bringing it back down to earth, so to speak. I mean, just stop and think about it. If you don't have affection for other people, if you don't have affection for, like, innocent animals, something like that, what's, what's, what's the quality? What's your life? You know what I mean? No affection for anything. What's, so, very important subject. So I'll stop there. Does anybody have any questions to start off with, and then we can take comments and whatever? Yeah, such as Noi Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, in this re- topic of affection, uh, it came to mind that one time uh, one Indian man asked Srila Prabhupada, because, you know, as we know, the Bhagavad Gita was spoken, and then Arjuna heard the whole Bhagavad Gita. But at the end, in the Battle of Kurukshetra, when his son Abhimanyu was killed, he displayed, you know, like emotions, Baba, yeah. in which, you know, like, human-like. So this Indian man was like, what's this? Prabhupada said, well, 
It's natural for a father to feel affection for his son. Now, in the other sense, you, fa you have devotees like Kunti, Dev Kunti Devi, who is praying, you know, cut me off from my affections to the Vrishnis and the Yadus, because she, my understanding is she fears any impediment for, to get closer to Krishna as a family member. It's a human life type, so mm. different cases. So it appears that the Supreme Lord Krishna or Lord Chaitanya, they might be like the only ones who can get away with that in the sense that don't display the human life. Like when, when uh, Gadad Harapan is crying and begging to the Lord, I want to follow you to Vrindavan, the Lord said, no, 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 you stay in Jagannath Puri. And then he was crying and rolling on the ground, the, the Lord just walked away. It appears like no affection. In, in one sense, human like type of action. And then also the same thing, walking away from his mother and his wife, and on and on like that. So, is there any thing that you can explain in this regard? It's not like, uh, philosophically speaking, we might have some statement about affection, but when it comes to, you, you know, transcendental knowledge in, 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 in in love, it's how to place it. How do you? Well, I could just, I'm like trying to make two teeny little comments in response. Right. One is that uh, about Arjuna, when he found out about Abhimanyu, yeah, he was uh, grief stricken momentarily or, or, or longer, but what did he do? What did he go on to do? Did he kind of leave the battle? Did he say, oh, forget it, this has gone too far now, I quit? No, he was upset, he was distraught, but he continued to fight. So despite the fact that he was feeling that affection and, and, and really disturbed by the fact that his son was killed, he continued. So there's the, there's the mind and there's the intelligence. So we feel these things, but the advanced devotee, like Arjuna, understands how to process or put, put everything in the proper perspective. He was able to put things in the proper perspective and, and do what he had to do. So that's one point, teeny point. And about the, um, you know, how only, Lord, only the Lord is able to become free from that, being affected by these feelings of affection. You gave that example of Gadardhar Pandit and how he just, you know, even though, and he did that with Rupa Goswami too, and maybe there's others, he just kept, he just went. You know, despite the fact that they were fainting and crying and whatever. But um, also he's affected, like Lord Chaitanya, I'm just one, you know, the only, this is the first example that came to my mind when uh, there's one exchange between him, I think it was Hari Das Thakur, and Hari Das Thakur was expressing great feelings of humility. And then Lord Chaitanya said, stop, stop, you're breaking, you're breaking my heart with your humility. So, you know, even the Supreme Personality of Godhead is... Uh, has those kind of feelings like that. But as I said, those are just two small things. Anybody else want to comment on that point or ask another question? Or? Okay. I have a question, if that's sure. okay. <clears throat> okay, so you uh, quoted Prabhupada's Krishna book, chapter 55, on this subject you were talking about. Um, so I'm just going to read a sentence or two. It says... Um, <clears throat> Okay, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna has many grades of parts and parcels, but the quadruple expansion of Krishna, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Prajuna, and Anuruddha are directly in the Vishnu category. Kama, or the Cupid demigod, who later took his birth from the womb of Rukmini, was also named Prajumna, but he cannot be the Prajumna of the Vishnu category. He belongs to the category of Jiva Tattva. And it goes on to say that is the verdict of the Goswamis. Correct. Okay. And I said that right during the yeah. class. I made that point. Okay, continue. So if you go to the tenth canto, mm -hmm. same chapter, text one, it seems to say the opposite. So I was just a little bit confused. Shukadev Goswami said, Kamadev Cupid, an expansion of Vasudev, Vasudev had previously be, been burned to ashes by Rudra's anger. Okay, here's the purport. In his Krishna Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami cites the following verse of the Gopal Tapani Upanishad to prove that the Prajumna who is the son of Krishna and Rukmini is the same Prajumna who is the member of Lord Krishna's eternal fourfold plenary expansion, the Chaturvyuha. Quote, 
There, in Dwarka, the Almighty Lord Krishna, endowed with his full potency, resided in the company of his three plenary expansions, Balaram, Aniruddha, and Prajumna. And then it goes on, the whole purport goes on to kind of like quote different, uh, different places in the scriptures to prove that point. So, how would I? Yeah. Well, who was those purports written by? Uh, yeah, Prabhupada's disciples, but they're quoting Jiva Goswami. They're quoting okay. other places. But, but, of the Prabhupada also, but Prabhupada also quotes Jiva Goswami. It's not like Prabhupada is unaware of Jiva Goswami's commentary because in this today's purport, Prabhupada says Jiva Goswami has explained this very elaborately in his treatise, Krishna Sandarbha. So mm -hmm. Prabhupada's aware of that, okay? And in his Krishna book, Prabhupada tells us, brings in a different verdict. So I would have to go with what I'm reading in the Krishna book, uh, personally. Because Prabhupada's obviously aware of what Jiva Goswami had to say. He's Because he's, he's, he says, he very elaborately explained it in his treatise. He must have read it and thought about it. And he come to this conclusion in the Krishna book. He's telling us that that Prajuna, that was the son of Rukmini, he was not the same. He does make some comment, though. That, that it's sort of like, I'll find it pretty quickly, I think. He does say that uh, he belongs to the category of Jiva Tattva, but for the but, but, but for the special power in the category of the demigods, he was part and parcel of the super prowess of Prajumna. So there's some sort of an unusual relation. You follow, that's Prabhupada's sentence. See? He says, he belongs to the category of Jiva Tattva. That's clear, right? He says, but for the special power in the category of the demigods, he was, he was a part and parcel of the super prowess of Prajumna. So, best I could do is like some sort of like a qualitative expansion, like, you know, some sort of shot. Just like you, in, the, in Chaitanya Charter and Rita, sometimes you read about, they say such and such devotee was a qualitative incarnation of so. So he had some quality, perhaps, but Prabhupada's making it clear he's not the same person, not an identical personality. At least that's Prabhupada's, what I think, yeah. what I come with. Archer, did you want to? Mm -hmm. okay. Can I, can I? Okay. Something Prophet said anywhere from the beginning of the Bhagavatam up to 1013, which is where he stopped, and something that came afterwards, we have to take what Prophet said. That's our position. Others may justify what they conclude, conclusions they came to, but if it differs from some conclusion that Prophet presented clearly, of course, you know, sometimes in transcribing, the Bodhis made mistakes. So we, before we can say definitively, we would have to go back to the OT the original transcription and see if somebody made a mistake in putting something in the book. But the general principle is if Prophet said anything from SB 11 up to SB 1013, that's what we go with. If it differs from something that came afterwards. That's not to say that the devotees who wrote the rest of the Bhagavatam or translated the rest of the Bhagavatam made egregious er errors. I'm not saying that. But if there's a differ difference between what they've stated and what Prophet said earlier, we go with Prophet's decision. Okay. Uh, okay. One last comment and then, or co question, and we can wrap it up. Dear Lita. Babu. Uh, just remembering something similar, uh, what Ananda Kirtan Prabhu asked about, you know, Krishna book says something and then Bhagavatam says something. So there was, you know, we know sometimes, like, say, some person is not qualified to be a Brahma, then Krishna personally takes that role. And uh, there is like also different yugas, Krishna comes again and again. So these both could be correct also. Um, that's what I was guessing. I missed it. So, so like Krishna comes again and again. Yep. So um, I heard something about Brahma in different yugas. Sometimes there is no one qualified to take position of Brahma and Krishna personally takes
takes that role. Well, not, not yugas, because yuga is way short for Brahma, but if there's no qualified jiva to take the position of Brahma, then Krishna will take the position of Brahma. So these, what I was saying is these both could be correct also, like in one of the past times, there was no one, no jiva qualified enough to take birth as Pradyumna, so one of the expansions. That would be considered a speculation, right? Yeah, <laughs> but it's good that you're trying to kind of make sense out of the whole thing. <laughs> Anyway, we'll probably should wrap it up there. Thank you. Gunther Shrimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai.